<laughs> Let's transform this ordinary tumbler into a customized one. I'm super excited because the rotary attachment for my Thunderbolt laser has just arrived, so let's unbox it and get it set up. One of the main reasons I'm so excited about this laser is that I'm going to be able to engrave different tumblers. So right off the bat, this is packaged really nicely. We got a cool little bag here with their awesome logo on it. We have our accessory box. And inside we have the rotary attachment itself. So, so far this thing looks super sturdy. And inside the bag is a t-shirt. I cannot wait to wear that. That's going to be super awesome. So thank you, Rotoboss. So they have a little link here for their Facebook group and just some caution stuff. But this thing looks so nice. But so this thing moves about pretty easily. You just have to undo a little thumb screw and that's pretty awesome. So let's check out what's in the accessory box. Oh my gosh, this just keeps getting better and better. We got a bag of gummy worms. All right, it looks like we have some different bolts. We got some awesome stickers. And I just saw on the box, it says this is a veteran owned company, which is even cooler. All right, so let's check out what's in here. We got another sticker. I think this is like a measuring tool. Okay, that's pretty cool. It comes with a little measuring tool so we can measure the different tumblers. It comes with a level, which we absolutely will need this. Uh, it looks like a spare wheel. So, you know, some spare parts. Another thing for the Facebook group and some more stickers. So this is really awesome. So this is everything that came in my box. So let's get this hooked up to the laser. Okay, so since we're going to put in the rotary, first thing we need to do is turn on the laser. And then the laser is going to want to do its little starting program. So let's hit confirm and move. And then mine was already in the corner, so it really didn't move much. And then so that traveling is just going back to the last place where I hit the origin. So just keep that in mind for if you have something in the bed, like if you had already put your rotary tumbler in there or something, it is going to go back to the last origin that you had if you've chosen user origin in Lightburn. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the laser head all the way back into the corner, and then we are going to put the bed all the way down. So this can take a couple seconds. And our screen will tell us that we bottom out and hit the limit switch. Okay, so for the rotary, you're going to drop this in. The motor goes towards the right side of the laser. And what I like to do is I like to butt it up against this ruler here on the right. And then I'll just shove the excess cord over here in the front. And then we can plug it in to where that says rotary. So just like so. So then this is a cup that we're going to use. This is just a little target cup that I found. And I've already wrapped it in some painter's tape. That way we can do some testing on it. So I did take off the little spring since this is a bit smaller. And set it up this way. And then just double check that it can actually freely move before you go on to any kind of testing or anything. All right, and I'm just gonna use the control panel here to kind of get the laser. So it's kind of hard to see, but there is a little dot here. And then I'm just gonna kind of jog it. I'm gonna set the origin to, to right here. So I'm gonna click origin on my screen. And then we're gonna hit autofocus. And we'll click okay. And then it moved forward a little bit. That way the black plunger can figure out what we're doing. All right, so that's ready to go. So I'm gonna hit this little start button right here. Hopefully this power isn't too strong either. <laughs> and that is just going over that top layer of the tape. So it looks like we didn't even get it to overlap completely. So I must have measured something wrong. So let's re-measure and then do another test. All right, you guys. So I did so much testing on this cup and I filmed so much stuff and I decided not to show it to you because I messed up big time. So I was doing this thing, it's kind of hard to tell, but where you do uh, a rectangle and then you have the two ends meet and that's how you figure out your steps uh just because i saw a lot of other people doing that um so i dialed it in and i got it perfect and then i went to do this cup um and it started and it started to overlap and i was like what the heck i was like i measured everything uh so i decided to check the rotable uh, manual and i was doing it wrong so what you're supposed to do for the testing is you're supposed to do a one inch square measure it and then adjust the steps based on that and you are supposed to not even do it with just any old round the cup you're supposed to do it with a 20 ounce cup that has like all the same size all the way down so let's do that and let's figure out the right measurements and hopefully this time it will work so uh this time we will do the test with the one inch and go from there <laughs> okay so it is the next day i decided to just kind of end my day the other day that way I didn't mess up a cup even further. But so we have our 20 ounce uh, tumbler here. And what I've done is I did a piece of foil around it and then I taped it down. Uh, the foil is to hopefully make it so that if the lazy beam goes through the tape, it's not gonna actually mark our cup. And since we're just doing our little one inch square test, I only taped up the top part as well. And then, uh, so this tumbler was a little bit too small to do the clamp in the uh, rotary. So I just 3D printed a little attachment for it. That way it'll just spin freely with the rotary. So let's put this in and then see what happens. 
Okay, so I do have this already kind of sized in there properly. So what I did is I butted this up all the way to the end of this, and then I just pushed it slightly to the side. That way it has some uh, free movement there, and you can see doing a little test that nothing catches and it can move freely. But um, So let's lower the bed a little bit. Bring it all the way down. I mean, you don't have to do all the way down, but just enough so that the uh, laser head is not going to bump into anything. So you can see that we have our little dots. And I'm just going to put it over here to the side. Then I'll hit the origin button. And then we'll do autofocus. And then we'll click OK. And then this thing is going to autofocus for us. Okay, and then so in here we have our artwork in the left center. We have user origin checked. We have our enable rotary checked. So we can send this. And I'll just title this test. Click OK. And then the laser will beep saying that it got it. And uh, for this test, we're just doing speed 400, power of 10. And then since we've sent this to the laser already, what we can do is we can hit frame, and then we'll see that the rotary moves. All right, so let's hit this play button, and then we can watch it do its first little test. So I've never tried the foil trick before, but I'm hoping it will work pretty well. So this is also just with the generic 4400 steps per rotation that the factory settings come with. And once this is done, we can measure it and see how it does. All right, it's done. Let's move the laser head out of the way. All right, well, it already does not look like a perfect square. But, so let's check it, see what it is. So it looks like it's about an eighth of an inch under in the width, but the height of it is pretty perfect. So let's adjust our settings a little bit. Let's go to our rotary settings. We'll hit this little circle. Let's try um, 5,000. And since our square was too small, we want to increase it to try to get that right. Okay, and then we can just plop this right back down into the laser and do a second test. So let's send this updated file. Click OK. Yes, override it. The laser will beep, letting us know that it got it. I know there's like specific formulas you could do to figure out the steps for rotation, but I decided to just wing it for this one. And I was going to do a couple tests, and if it was really not working out, then I was going to try some of those other formulas. All right. So we're going to move the laser head out of the way. And I can tell that's way worse. <laughs> so also though, each time you do a different cup of a different diameter, you are going to have to do this one inch test again to get the correct steps for rotation. But the nice thing is once you've figured out the steps for that size, uh, that should work on every cup that is that size. And you don't have to do it with each individual cup. <laughs> All right. Well, that is like pretty perfect. Look at that. Pretty perfect. Okay, so that looks good. Let's check the height one more time. That looks good as well. So I'm going to say that for these simple modern 20 ounce uh, tumblers with my 3D printed adapter, the steps per rotation is 4600. So not bad. So you can use that number at your own risk, but you definitely need to be doing your own testing throughout all of this. All right, let's get this tape and foil off of here so we can do our uh, design and I guess right now we'll find out if the foil did its job or not and it did no markings went through the foil which is pretty awesome so uh, that's a fun little rotary hack I guess alternatively to foil you can also use that like foil tape that you can find at Home Depot in the like um, duct like air conditioning section I'm going to try and do it too, to where the Simple Modern logo is facing the back and that my design is on the front right here. So I don't know, I might just put my name, I don't know. So one other thing I'm going to do to make my life easier is I'm going to take this kind of like grease marker. Uh, I have this for woodworking to mark pieces of wood, but I am going to take my little square here and then line it up, keep it straight. And then I am just going to do a mark all the way down. And this will wash off, but now I have a perfectly straight line that I can judge to make sure that the laser beam is level and I don't have to eyeball it or figure out some other way to do it. All right, so we got my logo here. So let's just bring it up a little bit. 
All right, let's say just about that size. So let's select these all, center it up. All right, so for this, let's do speed of 400 with a power of 70, 70. Uh, let's, I don't know, let's do 300. And then we're just gonna go for it, I think. So I'm a little nervous. So, because the last time where I thought the test went really well and then I sent it and it was wrong, but we, but we're just gonna do our best. So let's hit send, it's just a logo. All right, so one last thing we need to do before we can do this is we need to level our cup. But, and actually, it's actually perfect. I don't even have to adjust it. So, okay, cool. All right, well, that was easy, but normally you might have to adjust the height over here and adjust that to get it to the right level. But all right, so now we can do our auto focusing and set our origin. And now we're ready to do our design. All right, so far so good. One can only hope that it's not gonna be super crazy. So far it's looking good. I do have to say, I love this like kind of ombre colored green to blue tumbler as well. All right, fingers crossed you guys that this works. So I don't, I think the power of 70 was probably a bit overkill, but I just really wanted to make sure I got through all that powder coating. I might take the tumbler that I messed up in the earlier test and kind of really dial in that number. That way I'm not using like a ridiculous amount of power for these. But this looks so cool. And I do have to say the 3D printed adapter is working quite well. Let me know if that's something that you guys are interested in and I could put them on, and I could put them on my website. Oh man, this looks pretty perfect. Not gonna lie. This is pretty amazing. Oh my gosh. Wow. I don't know. I think there's just something about doing your first Tumblr, but I'm obsessed. I cannot wait to do a bajillion of these. <laughs> this is so cool. Let's move the laser head. You guys, that is pretty close to perfect. All right, let's clean this up. All right, now it's time to clean this thing. We're gonna use this uh, La Awesome, LA's Awesome or whatever, but I think this stuff smells terrible. So I will not be using this in the future. I just can't. So let's pour a little bit on here. Let that kind of soak in for a second. And then we'll take our little magic eraser here and then we can clean this up. Look at how much of that comes off. It's pretty cool. Once you've done this process too, you wanna make sure you do it, give it a nice, uh, cleaning in the sink or whatever you know really make sure you get um all the soap and grease and everything off so i'm gonna find something different to clean up the tumblers i think just because i cannot stand <laughs> how this smells oh my goodness i don't know how you guys all do this all right let's get this off too see how that grease pencil really comes off very easily what do you guys think you like it all right well this thing turned out freaking awesome thank you so much for coming along with this ridiculous journey with me definitely learned a lot in this video hopefully you can learn from my mistakes because i don't want you guys to have to waste any tumblers or anything uh, i think i can increase the power just slightly to get through this blue i do kind of feel like blue powder coating you do have to up the power a little bit uh, from what I've been noticing on other people doing these and stuff. But I mean, that's pretty awesome. <laughs> but thank you so much for watching, you guys. And let me know if you have any questions down below or anything. I'll be more than happy to get back to you. But uh, see you next time. Bye.